Hi guys, welcome to Martin Mead. My name's Stephanie and today I'm going to give you my birth story. So it's been a couple of weeks since I saw you guys last because a lot has happened in the past couple of weeks. So what I am going to do is I'm going to give you just a bit of the story behind how um, I went into labor and everything like that and what all happened there so you guys are informed. I have a couple of visitors with me. I have the little lady here. Her name is Cherith Ellen and then I also have that little guy back there as you can see he is back playing in the yard so I'm going to give you my story right now as he's playing and as she is trying to be content so um, on the 21st of June was my the date that I had to go for my doctor's appointment for um, my 39 weeks and I was getting gonna be going he was gonna be checking everything and seeing how everything was going um, he had talked about doing a stretch and sweep if I wanted and we had planned on doing that that day so the night before I had my appointment, which would have been the 20th, my mom and I happened to be sitting up in the living room and noticed that she was moving a lot. It seemed odd and I just kind of happened to tell my mom in passing, I really hope she's not trying to turn back around because we had had problems with her being breech and she had turned just in time so I didn't have to go and have her turned inside my belly. Um, before um, I went into labor so she had already turned around and I was really hoping that this all this moving wasn't an indication of her trying to turn back around so um, we went to the doctor the next day my husband and I and he got to feeling my belly and he said that feels like her head and it's up and so he did an exam and sure enough her bum was down and her head was up and she had turned back around again so um, he said you know what you're gonna have to go to the hospital and get an, uh, an ultrasound done just to make sure I'm correct but um, we're gonna send you for that ultrasound and then we can always they can always try turning her and everything like that if she is turned so what we did is we headed right to the hospital that that day the 21st and headed in and they did an ultrasound and they checked and sure enough her head was up and her bum was down so the doctor on staff that day said there were a few options that we had. We could either try to turn her and hopefully deliver her just like normal and not have any other problems. We could do that. She said it would be quite painful, but she said that it would also um, keep me from having to have a C-section. And so she said that was one option. The other option was we try to turn her and if my water breaks or we can't turn her, then we will go to, <laughs> we'll go on to a C-section. Um, if the water doesn't break, then we would schedule the C-section. If the water did break, we would go right into C-section. So um, those were kind of my options. Or she said, you could just not even bother with turning her. We could um, just go ahead and figure out what day you wanna have her and just get it scheduled. Um, she said, a lot of doctors don't want to deliver breech. So she said, if I decide I want to deliver her breech, then it's obviously my choice but we would have to um, find a time for her to get 
um, delivered by a doctor who actually wants to deliver a breech baby. So I told her, I said I would prefer to try to, to flip her back around. So on the 21st, the day that I had gone into the hospital, we decided to go ahead and I would let them try to turn her. So they spent about 45 minutes to an hour with me laying there, letting them just reef on my belly and try to turn her as best they could. They tried one way and they tried and they tried and they tried and they tried and she could only get her halfway turned and then she would pop back into the, um, into the position she was in and she wouldn't let them go any further. So she was like, you know what, let's try the other way. And they went ahead and tried the other way around. And the same exact thing happened there. She would not let them go any further than halfway. Um, it was extremely painful. I did not, like I've had a child um, before, so like I kind of knew I knew what pain was, but this was very painful to have them reefing on your belly. And like, I had no control over my limbs, like my legs. Um, they were shaking so bad and I couldn't keep them from shaking. Um, it was just very, very painful. So um, we spent about 45 minutes to an hour with them trying to turn her and she would not turn. So. They said, well, we're gonna have to go ahead and schedule a C-section then. Um, your water, my water didn't break at all. So they said, you know what? Just, we'll send you home. We'll schedule the C-section for Monday, um, which would have been her due date on the 24th. And they said, we'll schedule you for the Monday and you can just come in and we'll do the C-section then. So sure enough, um, they scheduled the C-section. I went in to, or went and headed home. We, we decided to stop by the store. And as we stopped by the store, I started having contractions. And I had been having a few at the hospital, but nothing to write home about. But once we got to the store, the contractions seemed to start a little more steady. And as I was up walking around, and so I told my husband, I said, we might end up in the hospital by this evening. And he said, well, I guess we'll see what happens. But by that evening, the 21st, I had noticed as I was sat down longer, the contraction seemed to kind of slowly stop. And by the evening, I slept all the way through the night. I didn't even notice any contractions. So if I had any, I didn't notice them at all. Um, and I slept right through it. But the next morning I got up and I was getting ready and I went in, went to the bathroom and started getting my hair done and all that. And I started to feel like I was peeing myself. And it wasn't a lot, just a very little bit. Um, and so I went to the bathroom and I was like, oh, it's probably just from them reefing on my belly, you know, this and that, which it was, but it was my water breaking and I didn't realize it at first, the first time or two. Then by the third time, I, re I went and got my mom and I told her to come and I told her what was going on and she said, that sounds like your water is breaking. You need to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Now, at the hospital the day before, they had told me with breech babies, breech babies will come a lot faster because their body will come out really quick, but then their head has to be birthed just like normal. And so they said, the moment that you start having any consistent contractions, you need to get in as soon as possible because we have to get you in for the C-section and prep you for surgery and all that stuff. So they said, you know, that's, they'll make sure they'll check right before the surgery to see if she's turned at all. But, um, but they did want me in as soon as possible. So when my water broke on the 22nd, 
um, in the morning, I was like, okay, this is it. This is the day. This is what's going to happen. And as you know, um, I believe I had told you guys in previous videos that I had tested positive for the GBS swab. So I was going to need some antibiotics as well, but my water broke. So when I get to the hospital, they started me on antibiotics as soon as they could, but the contractions were starting to really increase since my water had broke and they just needed to get me in and get her out as fast as they could. And so um, within about an hour, hour and a half of getting to the hospital, I was in for surgery and at um, 12.52 on the 22nd, in the afternoon, she was born um, by C-section. They had were able to get her out and everything, and she did pretty good at the first, but then she ended up starting to have breathing problems. Now, um, they sucked her out as best they could, but she still seemed to be struggling with breathing. So, um, probably about 10 minutes after she had been taken out, um, they started noticing like her lips were kind of going blue and she just seemed like she really needed some help. So they went back in, rushed her back in and sucked her back out some more. And then they said that she was gonna need to go into NICU. So they put her into NICU and we were in the hospital for four days. Um, with her in NICU so that she could be breathing like she needed to um, and just make sure that a lot of the amniotic fluid had come out um, and that she was doing okay before we went home. So for four days, I spent those four days in the hospital. The first day I was not able to see her because she was in NICU. Um, by that evening, my medicine, the medicine that I had been given to numb everything had been um, wore off and I was starting to um, be able to move my legs and to get up and to move around enough to get to a chair and be wheeled down to the NICU. So by Sunday morning on the 23rd, I was able to actually go see her and hold her for the first time. So it was an entire day just about um, before I actually got to hold her. Um, I was able to start nursing her and then I started having dizzy spells by the next day. I started having a ton of dizzy spells so the doctors were checking me out and I had to be confined to my bed for about another day. So then I went a whole nother day not getting to see her. Um, by the fourth day, I was like, okay, I am ready to, to get up and be moving and to get down there and to see her. And um, sure enough, I was able to get down there that day and we left the very next day. So I got home and of course, I have heard many people say, that C-sections are the easy way out. Now, I've heard it said, but I had never experienced a C-section in my entire life. So, and I really didn't plan or want a C-section at all, but that is just how the Lord worked things out. It wasn't according to my plan, it was according to his plan. And so, sure enough, I was not sure what to expect. And I'll have to do a video on what you should pack to prepare for a c-section in the hospital because I was not fully prepared. I, I knew a little bit of what I needed and some of it was through research, other was through previous surgery I had had a couple years ago. And so I wanted to make sure that I was prepared but I still to this day really wish I had been a little more prepared and knew more of what I needed. So sure enough, I um, got home and that whole week was miserable. Like I could not do barely anything. I could barely walk. I could barely get up and get moving. Um, I pushed myself probably more than I should have 
through the first couple of days home, but the doctors and nurses said the best thing for you is to actually be up moving. Um, not a lot, but get up, move around for a bit, and then go um, and sit down for a little bit, and then get up and move around for a little bit. Don't stay stationary, don't stay in bed. So sure enough, that's what I did. I pushed myself to do that. So I would get up, I'd move around the house for a little bit, I'd sit down. Um, I actually went to church that, that following Sunday. So like the first Sunday she was born, I was in the hospital. The second Sunday she was born, we went to church. They had a church picnic, so I thought it was the perfect. I could sit outside, be outside for a little bit. I hadn't been out for probably a good, couple of days and so I had been kind of cooped up in the house so I thought it was the perfect time to go and get out of the house and see some people and be around people so I did that on this Sunday well then the Monday came early early Monday morning and I don't remember anything from that day because I started having seizures and we don't know why as far as why it's all started um, we don't know if it had something to do with the c-section bringing something on or whatnot we don't know if it was the trauma from that we, we aren't really sure except the doc, the neurologist at the hospital said that the type of medicine that I had been put on for my seizures seven years ago actually makes the type of seizures that I have worse and so she said she didn't know if that was what triggered it on was my medicine finally gave way and that was what was making had made them so much worse but I started having seizures on Monday and I had seizures all day Monday and all day Tuesday of the following week right after I had had her um, and of course I have the incision from the c-section and having the seizures and throwing up from the seizures and all of that going on for two days straight so I had been rushed to the hospital on the Monday I don't remember anything from Monday I don't remember much of anything from Tuesday I remember just shortly before I got moved up to a hospital room I was in the ER for two days um, and I was so dizzy come to find out the dizziness was me having seizures as well and so um, they finally got my meds figured out but I was in the hospital for another five days and it was five days with barely seeing um, Cherith as well so I spent five days with my husband up at the hospital without getting to really be home and be around my family and with my kids. But I was thankful that I was able to get all of that figured out. They were able to figure my meds out and they have been monitoring me. I go for a few more tests to see if everything has cleared up and to make sure the meds are working. Um, I'm not allowed to do a lot of things that I would as a normal parent. I have to have people nearby with holding Cherith for a little bit just because I have had the seizures. I am doing a lot better now. I had my, my doctor's visit with my neurologist um, just a couple days ago and he said I'm looking actually really well. And he said he, he really feels comfortable with the meds that, that I got put on. The meds seem to be doing a good job. All of that, like the his whole exam seemed to go really well, and so he said, "We'll just wait it out a few months and see how you're doing." So that is where I'm at as of today, which is probably why you're seeing this video later in the day because I have been in the hospital for just about a week and a half <laughs> total, and so I have not had any time like I thought I would to um, even just sit down and film a birth video. Um, this is the first I'm actually able to get to it. But I am up and I'm moving around a lot better. I am able to do more mommy things than I was a week ago. Um, and I'm feeling so much better. So I thank you all for those who knew all about this. 
and have been praying for me. I thank you so much for your prayers. They mean so much to me. God answered my prayers when it came to our children. But then in the process of having her and being hospitalized for the seizures, um, I thought I was never going to be able to function like normal ever again in my life. My husband on the Monday and the Tuesday thought I would never be me ever again. Um, we don't know if I hit my head when I fell for the first seizure, but I was completely empty of myself. There was nothing left of me. Um, my husband would talk to me and I wouldn't even talk. I would just stare at him and there was nothing there in my head. I know you're, some of you are just hearing about this now, but um, I thank you all for all the prayers that you've given to us throughout the months of me um, expecting. Um, they've been truly, truly appreciated. Um, I will see you next week. I will be back next week. My videos might be shorter for the first few weeks because I am still recovering from a C-section and I'm not allowed to do a lot of things. As of right now, I can't be lifting a lot of stuff. And especially after having the seizures, I really hurt a lot of my muscles in um, my abs from the seizures and from throwing up and from all of that stuff that I've got a lot of recovering I have to do. So um, I just want you to know I am back, um, but the videos might be shorter and they might not be quite as in depth um, for the first little bit just because of my recovery. So um, thank you all for being subscribers and for being faithful and following through with um, watching the videos. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. You all have been here and those who comment all the time. I have a few people that are always down in the comment section commenting on something. Um, I appreciate you guys. I thank you all so much for all you've done for me. Um, I, I know my channel's not huge and I'm not, I don't have the best cameras like other people do, but, um, I just enjoy sharing what God has given me and, um, getting to share the talents that he's given me and the things that I'm able to do with other people to hopefully help them learn how to do things with their hands or, or even just being a mom. Um, I am not perfection at that by any means, but I am really thankful that the Lord has given me the talents and the abilities he has. So I will catch you in the next video. Um, to say goodbye, I will let you know all of the little juicy details with her. Um, her name is Cherith Ellen again, like I said. She was seven pounds, four ounces, and she was 20 inches long. She is quite a little bundle of joy. She is sleeping for pretty much most of the night. She wakes up one time through the night, and that's about four in the morning. Every so often, she'll have a night where she'll be up two to three times every night. Um, and she'll wake up and she'll be ready to eat. So those days have been different than the other days, but that's okay. That's part of being a mom. Um, I don't mind in the slightest. And, um, so she's, she's doing really well. She is gaining weight. She seems like it at least. We've not been to the doctor yet for her one month appointment, but she does seem like she's gaining weight and, um, she's growing like a little weed. So I'm so thankful that I could come on and I could introduce you to her and um, show you how she's doing. So I will catch you in my next video next week and I will see you then. Bye.